Then we go to the next uh, presentation uh, for today, which is a presentation from Joshua Johnson, uh, Ume Zurich. I hope I pronounced it right. He is CEO and founder of Lockdown USA, and his presentation will be about data redefinition for the integral world. So please, Mr. Joshua, you may start your presentation. How's everybody doing this morning? Thank you all. I hope you can see my screen. Okay. All right. Well, before I, I start, I'd like to thank uh, IWRI Research Institute for inviting me here. I really appreciate this wonderful opportunity to be here this early morning. Now, before we start, I want to give a little bit of background about what we are going to do today. We are going to um, expand on redefinition of uh, data. So that's why you have the title Data Redefined for the Integral World. Now, you can uh, take it as you like it. Since we have this COVID-19 reset and we are seeing over and over again the need to protect whatever we have online. So the introduction goes over here. Now the introduction goes that this is the first time we are disclosing our findings from it over 20 years research work. And this finding will bring solution to everyone. If you're online, it will bring a solution to you, not only the workforce. So the ultimate goal is the protection of online privacy and security of personal information. We believe this is good for humanity and it will bring about the unity of the whole world. Our strongly suggests that a true digital identity is equally a novel pursuit. This is something that many are trying so hard to accomplish in this, in this particular uh, disclosure. We recognize that one cannot do, as you've seen many speakers talk about trust and the correlation of trust to resiliency in the fight against COVID-19. Uh, you hear people talk about technology and being able to uh, develop uh, uh, educational system that's based off of it. All of this will require true digital identity. See, so this is something, like I said, that many are trying to accomplish this because of the reset we had in the system and the direction we are moving in the world. We have recognized that, that first we must redefine data. D data when redefined are made unique in content and context with respect to space and time serve the purpose of a true digital identity in an integral world. An integral world is the world where everyone is working with the next person nation states work for the next nation state. So we believe and it, it, it conclusively that this we give technology builders a solid foundation to rely on as they forge the new direction in the industry for an integrated world. The fourth industrial revolution, many would like to call it, it will need they will need to rely on clearly identifying entities as to who or what they are for accountability. This is very, very important. So what we show here in this paper uh, that the technology developed with the promise to create a uh, digital ID, true digital ID through security of information by encrypted verification, ver evaluate, validation and evaluation is really already here. This is founded upon what we call autonomous polymorphic and homomorphic encryption. The paper is not going to be very technical. It will be very, very uh, uh, 
very soft in an approach where everyone can relate to it. Now we're talking about the data redefinition and we're talking about security, uh, securing people who are on the internet and all of that. To do that, let's look at what data is. You cannot do that without first understanding what data is. So data is a correlation of statistical samples when brought into one common identifiable unit, it's known as a fact at that time. And it's uh, like field specific, like you have health data, medical data, and so on and so forth. So when you are analyzing data, for those who know, there are things to consider. One, you have to consider the source of that data. So in this case, in the information technology, you're talking about a single source of truth. For single source of truth, the, the, the master document from which other companies derive is only one, and it does not silo into any other document. That is why it's called single source of truth. It's very analogous to um, a master document with no other reference point in that case. So you can only refer reference to that document as you can see below here. And, and the next part of it is uh, what you call multiple source of truth. And multiple source of truth is direct, direct opposite. When you look at the, the diagram you are looking at right now, you see a single uh, source of truth, which is SSOT. You can see the core of it in the orange. And then you look at the multiple source of truth, which is direct opposite, meaning that you have many sources of truth. These are some of the problems we're experiencing and thus the need to redefine data after knowing what the data is and how they are being used, yes, we must redefine data to move forward. So moving forward, the way we analyze data and verify its authenticity or its origin affects how we use it. This, is all, this also affects how we classify them as a part of a business logic or general information, if you have it. And businesses, you do know, rely on uh, this kind of uh, information to make decisions. So data information are interchangeable at this time. This is very important for government institutions and corporations. And when you look at the single source of truth for information technology or engineering, this is, they improve the business decision making. Currently, we're using other technologies uh, that requires a whole lot of information, metadata, uh, sometimes what they call data lakes for those in the data science, artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, et cetera, et cetera. There's a large metadata for IoT and OT. These footprints exposes the individual, everyone who's on the internet. And the situation we find ourselves in the world today requires that something had to be done about that. So some of these strategies in blood make data sources very susceptible, especially when you have multiple sources of truth and this in turn has a high propensity of introducing dirt, adulterated, corrupt, and non-sanitized information to the, to, to the internet or workforce or what have you. Now, there's been scenarios where the classified data also being tempered, uh, tempered with, and that's uh, another thing. And now that we, we are armed with this understanding, we have a sound understanding of what's going on with the data first. We know what the data is and we know what's going on with it presently. We can observe that data does not share a life cycle of accountability since we have all these varying analysis of it. And this affects the context and content. There is no, you can say there's no perversive data life cycle framework that promotes the implementation of uniqueness of all data. I mean, all data. We have visibility, yes, transparency, but not absolute accountability of their resources. So that brings us again to redefining data. When you look at the diagram before you, there is uh, an, uh, quite an allusion to what we call security of information by encrypted verification, validation, and evaluation. When you look at that, it's presently what is being used today. The only problem that we see there is these attributes found in your profiles, say you have a Facebook profile, you have 
your username and password, email or whatnot, your address, all these are your attributes. So there's a way to break this down to advanced authentication, which allows us to triangulate and bring about the needed trust and communication. As you can see, the platform basically today is moving towards a tech technological uh, uh, moot or what they call mass on open online training is moving towards that direction. Just a need to identify all this. So there's there's a correlation between trust and resilience, resilience and technology. Or you can say trust by resilience. I mean resilience by trust or resilience by technology, whichever way you choose to say it. So this brings us down again to find a way to build uh, security of information within the component of spoken and written languages. So there are a redefinition here. As a result of what we've seen so far, we have a great need to redefine data henceforth. Uh, if you have a comma or a dot and other components of written languages, say in your message, you have all these things. We are saying that these things should carry on their distinct representation as their identifi identification at all time. It doesn't matter what time you use all these your messages, they should carry on their own identification. Case in point, you have your image in the mirror, you have yourself. You have yourself in a sunny day and you have your shadow. We're saying that you can do whatever you want with the image in the mirror and, and the, your shadow, but the real source, source cannot be touched, tempered or corrupted. So we can still retain our copy paste culture, but all data must be accounted for at all time. If we must successfully achieve our goal in securing anything online, building a true identity, which fosters an integrated world. What do we mean by defining data? One might ask, how should we treat data in the digital era? What mechanism will shape this concept? Now, I know these are three questions, but we won't have time to answer all of them. But I guarantee you, addressing one of these questions will be able to uh, satisfy, satisfy our thirst for those answers. So let's go and take a look at the next question there, which is uh, how that should be treated. We will be answering that one and that one only. So how that should be treated? Uh, in the digital era, redefining data is the process of securing all information using encrypted verification, validation, and evaluation. Like I've shown you earlier, the concept where it, it refers to your credentials that is already being used. That's something that needed to be done on them so that they can serve us as a true digital identity. There should be another layer of data analysis introducing information te technology, which must represent all data as intermediary. What I'm saying here is, intermediate representation, like the image in the mirror, you have yourself and you're looking in the mirror, there's an image there. We should have used that image in the mirror as the intermediate representation. This is what we have to protect as the provenance. In other words, by redirecting a specific part of, part of the provenance, which I've explained earlier, is more or less information broken in pieces like your name, email, et cetera, which we call attributes. We have to redirect this provenance to an alternate data, which in this case is encrypted. Security of information encrypted, encrypted by encrypted evaluation, validation, and, and verification. This guarantees the protection of the source, which in this case refers to the provenance and the connection to the right intermediary at all time. Remember, the Real data should also have connection to the intermediate representation at all time. In Corolla, I will go ahead to explain that. Each intermediary will, at no given point, reference a value type which it did not originate. In that case, we can say that the process is correct. If the intermediary can only point to the right source, if all intermediaries are distinct, yes, so are the sources. If a source cannot relate to the wrong intermediary, then it is sound. So this simply means if everything in the system is correct, then the system is correct. Then if everything in the system 
is able to detect when something is wrong, then the system is sound. And that is what we have done. If you would have copied and pasted anything, that copy must reference the parent document. If not, you would never justify any true digital identity which would boost the fourth industrial revolution. Time stamping is not just enough. More work should be done in redefining data because experience shows that building new tools to cover every breach is not the answer. We need to get down to the root cause of the problem. And the question is, what is the root cause of the problem? It's already been explained, but let's look at the techniques to actually implement some of these problems. We always lament and say, uh, for those of us in the engineering and IT information technology, there's data, data everywhere, but not a single unique datum in all. Arguably, one can strategically solve this problem once and for all, <laughs> yeah? We need to bring, to do this, we need to bring an external context into cryptography. Cryptography is the science of being able to make sure that information is hidden to those who are not authorized and always available to those who are authorized for it. To do this, there's a need for autonomous, polymorphic and homomorphic encryption. This is an advanced encryption capable of addressing on the onslaught of quantum computing on primitive cryptography. Primitive cryptography is what we have today. And it's very notable that it's no longer secure. Simply put, autonomous uh, polymorphic, uh, homomorphic encryption. Uh, when you look at the polymorphic, as the name suggests, you have multiple and you have morph changing. It will change many ciphertexts from digital identifiable products to one message or player text. This creates layers of ciphertext that could be used as intermediaries or intermediate representation, like I've already explained. Homomorphic aspects of this only applies when you are doing computation over encrypted information. Therefore, you cannot have a homomorphic encryption without having a polymorphic encryption. Now, we're not gonna go into uh, too much detail on that. We would like to just show you some reports from uh, what we implemented. And before I do that, I wanted to show you uh, at the very bottom here, the, the provenance strategy. Uh, the provenance strategy, you have the prover and then you have the provenance, you have the proof, which comprise of intermediate representation. And then you have to prove the intermediate representation by uh, applying the proof to, uh, to point back to the, by applying the proof process to point back to the source. Then the verifier, if the verifier is successful in proving who they are, they go to the next level, which in this case, if you say yes, then access is granted. If you say no, access will not be granted. That's the future of what we are talking about here. Now, moving forward, in uh, the report that we got is quite clear, straight to the point. We used the system we developed out of our research and we created a simple app. You can find that on, on our website, it's logged on. Cash app, and we ran a result, uh, uh, a test on this app following uh, an open source uh, framework, um, mobile framework called uh, MobSF. And if you want more details on it, I can provide it to you. And we found out that most of your application, most of your interested application that you use today, they're not secure at all because of the way they were designed. And they, they weren't considering redefinition of data in any sign. So as you can see below here, you have your WhatsApp, Zoom, Skype, or whatever. They only, the critical, the risk attached to them are very critical, which is not good. When you look at lockdown, you get in on 75% out of 100, which you have a green on there, which is low in risk. And, and that's just that. So in conclusion, having shown you the result of what we've done, Although the paper wasn't, uh, wasn't expensive, uh, redefinition of data is the start, starting point for creating any meaningful digital identification for the unity of the world. Once we assess the present need for this, the work will be halfway done. A perversive re redefinition 
we go a long way in uh, securely connecting data to people, uh, locations, other materials used in technology. Uh, we call these materials sub entities like your smartphone, which serves uh, your primary authentication device, as well as your IoT devices. This will help the world to interact easily soon. These will form a triangle with an almost indelible accountability. Ultimately, we will be creating a digital identification with true digital identification with many benefits. Growing from protecting online privacy, securing personal information, saving up the hackers, solidifying access to public resource in telehealth social media, teleconferencing, administration, and banking. In other words, we're saying here that it's not necessarily putting a chip in your forehead or on your hand, but there's a better way to do this things. This means that less internet supervision, you have less internet supervision, auto digital, automatic digital controls, and many more advantages abound. And as a matter of fact, the world will reap the greatest benefit if we remain inclusive by integrating relevant resources from many research projects of diverse backgrounds. So technology now becomes a driver of equality as opposed to driver of inequality because people are uncomfortable when they can't trust, but when the trust has built into systems, it will be possible that will be, uh, it will be faster and much better to build the integral world a peaceful place bound with technology and all these things. Together, we can realize a harmonious digital identity, true digital identity standard and product. Instead of building new tools for new breaches, we can put our focus in the building uh, security into data. As, 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 as one of the root causes of the problem is the fact that the security is not in the data, it's not in the internet. More so, this will make obsolete the bandit culture that we have today in uh, say cybersecurity and the concern posed by ever increasing needs for text, audio, video conference, and extensive application. And that's it for me. And uh, I thank you guys again for being present. And I hope I've satisfied your thirst. And I'll be ready for any QA. Thank you, Josiah. We have one question from Kelechi. Kelechi will be able to ask a question here now. Uh, thanks a lot, Josiah, for coming. Um, I know you are a lot patent in your company and you're doing a lot of things with uh, internet technology. Uh, my question is, how could we, our institution, benefit from your technology and how could it also help for connection with every part of the world, including Africa? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I really uh, like that question. So the way the technology will work is very simple. Uh, today, we have the big techs all over the world. The big techs are making a lot of money from uh, targeting your, your targeting, uh, targeted advertising sent to you all the way to tracking you online, knowing what you would do before you even do it, and also getting, getting biographics from you without your, you know, without your approval and all of that. And I think all these spells into money. So it is possible that institutions like IWRI should be able to incorporate this in your uh, developmental work as far as your, your hosting of uh, class materials and your registration processes and et cetera. This protects your clients, it protects you as a company or institution from exposing and leaving footprints on the internet. Once you do that, it simply means that it is possible that such security when it's built in your platform allows you guys to, to be in your own little enclosure while in the internet, you have your own little enclosure where your information are not as filtrated to the internet. So in the long run, you can also sell your data. So we give you the power to having that autonomous encryption because of our deep understanding of the data and uh, encryption technologies and et cetera. So you have the power to be autonomous the way you handle your data. Therefore, you can decide when your data is born, how long it lives, and when it dies. 
that's the technology that we're talking about. And again, if your school uses a lot of sensors, it is possible that we can make it possible for the sensors to communicate effectively, knowing that I'm talking to sensor, I'm sensor A, I'm talking to sensor B, microcontroller for sensor B. We don't have that now in this world. So there's a way to do that right now. We have the solution, but it's not readily adapted. We are trying to accelerate the adoption where people can see what we have to offer and start using them because this will bring about the trust that we need. As the earlier uh, professors talked about, that trust has something to do with the resilience when there's a pandemic. So it's important to build some of this interesting technology that promotes human health and, hum and actually uh, promotes uh, boosts humanity. It, it needs to be built into the technology of the currency. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for this wonderful presentation and this uh, beautiful answer. Mm -hmm.